there's a way to do that automatically. I'll set that moving forward. Make sure you have that option to record without asking. Anybody else want to record really quick? Daniel, you do? I'll set everybody to record really quick before we move forward. I'll have that set up for the next class automatically. All right, everyone should have that option to record. Got almost all of you checked here. And there we go. Okay, so back to what I was saying. When it comes to radiographic procedures, in particular, when you're working in areas such as IR, whoops, IR, you will have to practice that aseptic technique. And many of you will be rotating through IR this semester. Therefore, you've got to learn how to properly don that attire. And we're talking about those sterile gloves, sterile gowns, the hat, the mask, everything under the sun. And has anyone here ever done the sterile gloves before, the surgical gloves? It can be quite awkward if you've never done that before. And we are going to learn to do that together. It's actually quite entertaining, especially if you've never done it before, because usually everyone messes it up the first time. It can be quite silly. We will have fun when we get to those surgical gloves moving forward. So something else we'll talk about this semester are vital signs. Who, who loves numbers? I sure don't. I hate numbers. I'm not a numbers guy. I'm more of a words guy. And I'm sad to say. Hey, Sorry, I'm sorry to say, you. say again, Sharon. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Wani said the meeting has kicked her out and she cannot come back in. She cannot come back in. Uh -uh. Okay. Well, there's nothing I can do about that at the moment, but if someone who's recording can share that video with her. I'll make sure it's fixed before the next meeting. I don't know why it's doing that. It should let her back in. Did she follow the original link? Hang on, hang on. I'm gonna keep going so we don't delay anything here, guys, but can someone send her the email again to see if it'll let her in, if you don't mind? While I keep moving forward here, thank you. So talking about numbers, guys, vital signs. Yes, we have to learn every single one of these numbers that you see listed on the PowerPoint here. And we have to learn those averages for each of them. Because like I said before, one thing that registry likes to throw at you is they love to throw these vital sign numbers and ask you, well, what's the average blood pressure in a male of this age? What's the average heart rate? What's the average oxygen saturation? And that's those little questions that can really throw you off and make you start losing those points on that registry. So we're gonna go over all those specifically we're gonna talk about the averages. We're gonna talk about how we obtain each of those as well. We're gonna talk a lot about oxygen, oxygen administration. We deal with a lot of oxygen administration in this career field and oxygen is considered a drug and we have to use it responsibly. You might be like, well, oxygen is good for us. Well, oxygen can actually cause a lot of damage if we don't use that properly on our patients. In that picture below there, you'll see this device right here. Can anybody tell me what kind of device this is? Has anyone ever seen this before? Chest drainage system. Good guess. It's, it's a chest tube system for chest drainage. Yes, yes. We talked about those, those um, pleural effusions last semester. When I talked about those chest tubes, this is the device I was talking about. We're going to talk about all these specific tubes and lines and the types of patients that will have these and the proper care related to them specifically. Because yes, I know you're not nurses, the nurses do put these in, the doctors do put these in, but there are instances where you're gonna to have to manipulate these as well to obtain a proper chest x-ray. Some of you might remember, I was telling stories about when you start getting on those portal machines, the last thing you wanna do is go in there all kamikaze and run into one of these chest tubes because you'll rip it out of somebody's chest. That's the device I'm talking about right there. And you'll see it's on the floor. Does anybody know why that's on the floor? Why do we put those on the floor? It seems like a really bad place to put something that should be sterile, yes? So the gravity pulls it down? Yes, it is a gravity-based system. It's a retrograde, retrograde system to be specifically. 
if that's put up high above the patient, guess what's gonna to happen to all the fluid? It's gonna flow back into the patient. So we put it on the floor to create proper suction using gravity and a retrograde system to drain that fluid out of the patient's lungs or whatever organ might be keeping that fluid that should not be there. So we'll talk about all those types of lines, what their uses are, and what you're gonna to need to watch out for, especially when you get out there and start doing portable x-rays because we get really gung-ho with those pearl machines. I know I did when I was a young x-ray tech. I started getting real excited moving that machine around and it is very easy to cause damage. And if you ever go to Texas Children's Hospital, you can see some of the damage I did there specifically because I did run the portable into a wall when I first started there and put a big hole on the seventh floor, West Tower, PCU area. There's a big metal plate where I smashed into that wall, as a matter of fact. I said they should have, you know, put my name on there in gold. You know, John Donahue was here, 2000, whatever year that was. But, you know, they, they didn't take me up on that. But do be careful whether you're around lines or walls like me. Don't leave a legacy like I did by putting a hole in the wall. You'll probably be out of this program really quick. I don't suggest that. Well, there we go. So we're gonna also learn a lot about cardiac monitoring. Yes, you will deal with cardiac monitoring. Once again, something that we usually attribute to nurses and doctors, but as x-ray techs, we have to be able to recognize these numbers on this cardiac device. Why? If I'm in there doing a chest x-ray on a patient and they start going to cardiac arrest, if something's beeping on that monitor, I need to know how to respond accordingly. Now, I don't want you to ever get this habit of saying, well, I'm an x-ray tech, I don't deal with that. So I'm gonna get a nurse to take care of that patient or that beeping sounds. That, those words should never leave your mouth. You've gotta be able to recognize why that machine's beeping, because they beep a lot. If you've ever been around them, they're always going off with some alarm, something going on, but you need to know why that's happening and be able to fix that properly and or inform the right person properly, not just scream out, hey, it's beeping, someone come help me. You need to know what to do personally, how to recognize the numbers on that device and know how to read them the correct way. And you move to the right there, that is an EKG printout that you'll see on most EKGs. Yes, I am sad to say, you gotta learn what each of these intervals stand for and what each contraction is going on between the heart, atrial contraction, ventricular contraction, the relaxation phases. It's all represented in those different intervals upon that EKG. We do have to learn all those because once again, even though they may not ask a lot of questions on it, the registry does like to throw these on that registry exam. One of those things you don't want to forget. They might say, what does the P interval stand for? Well, that's going to be when the atria start to contract. We got to know what each of those mean. We also need to know when it's irregular, if there's an arrhythmia going on in a patient's heart, how to recognize that. So we'll learn all about that moving forward. We're going to learn a lot about all the different medical emergencies. There are a ton of them, obviously in healthcare. We've got lots of medical emergencies to go over. We've got to know how to recognize those we've got to know how to respond to those properly. We've got to know those signs because yes, you're an x-ray tech, you're taking x-rays. If someone goes into cardiac arrest, you're not gonna run the opposite direction and say, oh, help me, I don't know what to do. You're gonna know exactly what to do. So administer CPR properly, call the right people, call a code, do all that in the proper methods because it is gonna happen on your watch, even as a student. You know, we've had students respond to medical emergencies since I've been here multiple times, there's been students that have jumped on a stretcher and started administering CPR immediately. You've got to be ready to do that because you never know when someone's gonna all of a sudden go into cardiac arrest or just pass out on you. You've gotta respond accordingly, call those codes, get that crash cart, administer CPR if you have to. Yes, you will, or I'm not gonna say you will, but you may be in that situation while you're in clinic. Last thing I wanna hear is my x-ray students start running the opposite direction when someone's going into cardiac arrest and they say, well, man, your x-ray students, they're, they're scared of cats. They didn't even respond properly at all. They ran the opposite direction. No, that's not gonna be you. You're gonna know how to respond to those emergencies properly. You're gonna know the proper way to respond and all the steps to take for each and every single type of medical emergency that we might face out there in the clinics. And yes, this horrible curse word right here, pharmacology. And I will tell you right now, that was my worst subject in x-ray school. Now, lucky for you, we're not gonna go too in-depth into it. In my x-ray class, I had to do an entire semester specifically on pharmacology, 
I thought I was going to kill myself that semester. Not, not literally, not literally, but I thought I was going to lose my mind in that course. It is very complicated. It is very, 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 very um, headache inducing. But lucky for you, we're going to do more so a summarized version of pharmacology because yes, in x-ray, we do administer some drugs. Does anybody know any kind of drugs we might administer in x-ray specifically? What kind of drugs what might, we, might we use? There's lots of them. Anybody know? Contrast. Contrast, yes. We um, administer a lot of contrast. What else? Barium enemas. Barium enemas, they would use that contrast, yes, yes. What else? I said one earlier. Oxygen. Oxygen, yes, oxygen is a drug. Did everybody know that oxygen is a drug? That is a registry question. Oxygen is considered a drug. Do not forget that. That's one of those tricky ones I like to throw at you. So, oh, well, I breathe oxygen all the time. But yes, the administration of oxygen is a drug. So we're going to talk about all those types of drugs that we will utilize in x-ray and go into that summarized version of pharmacology. I promise I won't break your brains too bad on it because, hey, Mr. Donahue hates it too. We're going to focus just on what you need to know for your registry. And then speaking of contrast, we're going to go into deep, deep detail on the types of contrast that we will use throughout radiology. We use lots of barium contrast in fluoroscopy. There's lots of iodinated contrast in CT and MRI. We're gonna go through all those specifically. We're gonna talk about the routes of administration. We're gonna talk about the intravenous routes of administration, all the different types that we're gonna measure those drugs, as well as those popular types that are utilized in our career field. And then we're gonna to get to our practicums. Now, once again, these dates are subject to change. I'm working this out right now with the school guys of when we can do these properly, because I do have to give you a proper demonstration of how to use practicums. And then much like we did the donning and doffing last week, you're gonna demonstrate each of these practicums to me for a grade. So what are we gonna be doing? We're gonna be doing sterile tray, first of all. Sterile tray is something that you will do when you go into your IR rotations. That is what we call a sterile procedure. Now, you'll hear the, 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 the phrase when you're in surgery cases, stay away from the blue. Always stay away from the blue. If you touch anything that's blue, you're breaking sterile field. So you're gonna to learn to do those sterile trays where you gotta open those instruments, drop them on the cloth, unfold it, set everything up for the doctor because you will be setting up those trays for the radiologist. And I can promise you right now, be careful, be careful, be careful whether you're in IR or surgery and ask to help, be careful around the blue. Watch where you're stepping, watch where you're going. A lot of these areas are very tight. And I promise you from personal experience, you touch the blue and you break sterile field, there's gonna be curse words flying at you from every direction. Believe me, it's gonna happen. I'm not trying to scare you, but we gotta learn to do this properly to avoid those situations. Then of course, we're gonna learn to put the gowns on, the surgical gowns this time, not like with donning and doffing. We're gonna learn to put the surgical gowns on with those surgical gloves to make sure we're not breaking that sterile field and keeping ourselves sterile for those cases. So yes, you will put on surgical attire, much like the surgeon does in the OR, mostly for those IR cases that you'll be rotating through. We're gonna to learn to do each of the vital signs. Yes, you will learn to do blood pressure, temperature, respiratory rates. And you're saying, well, Mr. Donahue, why am I learning this? I'm not a nurse. Well, no, you're not a nurse, but should you get a career in a clinic as opposed to a hospital, a lot of clinics are very small. And a lot of x-ray techs have to do the vital signs in clinics. Therefore, you need to know to do those vital signs because the last thing you want to do is lie on your resume and say, yeah, I can do vital signs. You get there for your first day of the job and you have no clue how to do a vital sign. You're going to embarrass yourself and you're probably going to be working there for a very short amount of time. So you got to go in knowing how to do that blood pressure, how to do that respiratory rate, how to do the temperature and be able to record those properly as well as know whenever it's high, low, average, what have you. And then finally, this wonderful thing that people typically dread, but I promise you it's a lot more fun. It will be a lot more fun than you realize. We are going to learn to do venipunctures. Who here has dreaded doing a venipuncture? I know I did in school. It used to scare me to death because I used to hate needles. It used to freak me out. But I do promise you it's not nearly as bad as you may think. 
We do have some mock arms like you see right here that you will practice on. No, you will not be sticking real people, at least not in class, unless you just want to. I mean, some people volunteer their arms and just want to. You can do that, but we will have the mock arms for you to practice on. They do have blood draw come back. Very cool. You learn the proper way to do those venipunctures, and you're probably saying well, once again, well, why would I need to do venipunctures? I'm doing x-ray. Well, who here is going to go into CT or MRI? Or anybody interested in CT and MRI? If you're interested in that modality, you'll be doing venipunctures daily, every single day. Why? Because we do a lot of contrast administration through the veins of the arms for those CT and MRI procedures. So you're gonna learn how to do that. You're gonna gain the confidence to do it, whether you're doing a grandma or a kid, we're gonna learn all the methods to do those venipunctures properly and give you the confidence to do that moving forward. And that is one of your competencies, by the way. When you get to clinic, and I suggest to you, as soon as we learn how to do this, if you're in an area that's doing venipunctures, get that venipuncture competency right away because a lot of students tend to wait to the last minute on these. They'll wait to their last semester. They get really nervous. They forgot everything they learned in class and they have a lot of trouble attaining that competency. That's a comp you can get for your numbers. So once we learn those venipunctures, jump on that in clinic immediately. Get those venipuncture comps. That's a great one to obtain early on. Trust me. Trust me. So that's your practicums. I'm repeating myself a lot, but I want to get, I know I'll get this question from somebody. Mr. Donahue, next week you had the practicum scheduled. Are we still having the practicum? I'm going to let you know as those dates shift. I've got to make sure we have the availability at Kirby to keep your numbers down, to do everything properly. As we move forward, just stay tuned. We'll get those practicums scheduled properly and get you all squared away and ready to go. All right, so I'm going to end today on this fellow right here. Has anybody ever heard of Jim Thorpe? I see a couple of you raising your hand. Very spectacular character. So this is a guy from way back 100 years ago. He was the first Native American to win an Olympic medal in the United States. And he placed in the top four in 10 events. But there's something very particular about this guy, something that happened to him. When he was getting ready to compete, someone stole his shoes. So you may have heard this story. Someone stole his shoes. Well, he still wanted to compete in the Olympics. He was very poor. He couldn't just go buy new shoes. So he went into a trash can and obtained two different shoes. They didn't match at all. There were two completely different shoes that did not fit properly. And he went on to win an Olympic medal despite having beat up old shoes from a trash can that did not fit him. As you can see in the picture, he has two different colored socks. They didn't fit correctly either but he made the situation work for him. So why am I talking about this? Well, we're all in this online learning right now. Some of us hate it, some of us may like it. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but even though I'm being thrown the situation right now where I feel like the class was taken away, much like Jim Thorpe's shoes were taken away, we're gonna make it work no matter what. We're gonna put those unmatched shoes on Everything will feel a little topsy-turvy and unmatched right now, but we're gonna move forward together and make this work the best we possibly can. That's my promise to you. But how do we do that? We've all got to work together. If you're being interactive, if you're talking, if you're asking questions, this course is gonna be much more effective. I promise you that. I promise that I will do my part to get you prepared for your registry, to get you prepared for your boards, to get you the confidence you need for all these methods of patient care we're gonna learn, but be a Jim Thorpe, be a Jim Thorpe. That's why I ask you to do this semester because everything's topsy-turvy right now. But you can go on and still be successful if you find a way to make it work for you, just like he did. He found two random shoes in a trash can. They didn't fit. They hurt his feet, but he still went on and won those Olympic medals. Each of you here can still succeed, even though all this is thrown at us with this virus, everything's crazy right now. We can all do it together and we will all do it together. So can we do that? Yes. Thumbs up, yes. Awesome, awesome. We're gonna make it fun, it is a fun course. Keep calm, let's have a great semester. I'm sure some of you are already feeling like this right now. But we're not gonna get into the first chapter today. We will start on Wednesday with aseptic technique. A lot of info coming at you. And we're gonna rock out this semester. Are there any questions? Anything I can answer for you guys? Any concerns? All right, guys. Well, that is it for this class today. 
Enjoy PRE. I will see you all again at one o'clock where we'll talk about Rad Pro 2. We got lots to talk about in that class. And I do encourage you guys, all of your clinic questions you may have, that's going to be a great class to discuss them because we're going to talk a lot about clinic. We're going to talk a lot about your competencies and the class. So if you have any questions concerning clinic, competencies, image reviews, all the above, let me know and we'll answer all those questions today at one o'clock. Enjoy your day, guys. Enjoy PRE. Enjoy lunch. I will see you all soon. Goodbye.